Hey there, hope everybody's well. Um, said I was going to be going live today. I've got a very, very special um, live session and uh, and an interview for you um, with someone who's going to add awesome value um, to you and your business. But um, I just wanted to, to kind of um, give you a bit of information before we went live. So I'm going to be doing this a little bit more often um, with different experts in different areas, uh, bringing in some people to share some value with you all and uh, uh, providing some uh, great content, uh, some hints and tips and skills in different uh, aspects of uh, business and some other coaches too. Um, and what we'll kicked that off today with um, a very special guest, uh, Mark Nicholson. So Mark is the founder of Systems and Scale. He's also uh, an online marketing coach um, and is one of my coaches and mentors. I talk a lot about this idea that as coaches, that we should, uh, we should always be looking to improve and develop uh, and mark someone that has um, had a huge impact in my business over the last uh, uh, year to two years, all around um, you know, online lead generation, marketing, systemizing and scaling the business. So um, putting in place all of the things that allow me to be able to do what I do best and not have to worry about um, all of the kind of tech and stuff that goes in the background. So ask Mark to come along and share some great information around how to systemize and scale your business. So if you're a coach, if you are um, in any sort of business that you're looking to develop online, uh, and Mark will explain why you should be online, um, but he's, he's, uh, he, this, this is going to be great value for you because ultimately we're all looking to grow and develop, uh, add systems to our business, make things easier for ourselves, and then be able to scale it to, to the level that we want. And that's kind of what everything that Mark's about. So uh, I'm going to bring him on and uh, he's going to share some amazing value from you. Um, the reason that uh, we've been doing this just recently, or I said that I would do this, is um, I'm a huge believer in this idea of uh, building, uh, not, not kind of building a business and then fitting your life around it, but building a life and, and then fitting your business around it. Uh, Mark's a great example of this because not only has he managed to, to systemize and scale his own business, uh, and help others as well. But he's been able to do that for himself on the basis that he's now able to be location independent. So he can work from anywhere. So he's going to be joining us today from um, from Spain, where he's currently uh, spending his time at the minute. And um, But he's going, to, he's going to come and share ways that you can develop and systemize your business to allow you to have not only the business that you want, but also to lead the life that you want. So uh, without further ado, please welcome... Uh, Mr. Mark Nicholson. Hi, Mark. Hey, Dean. Thanks for that, mate. That was a, a great intro, I think. <laughs> it's good to be on here, though. And um, yeah, it's good to be here and share some value. In, and obviously, if we can help people with their online marketing, that's what we're all about doing here. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So how, how are you enjoying Spain? <laughs> is, that, is that a rhetorical question <laughs> compared to the UK? <laughs> but yeah, it's really nice. Obviously, it's lovely. Um, I think the only thing I wish is that the laptop worked in the sun you know like whenever you're out in the sun this you just can't see the screen so it's like yeah. that's the only bad thing but yeah it's, it's nice just being able to live more live more live more of an outside life and um, in the uk i always wanted to be outside but i just you know i did it, it's either raining or freezing cold or windy so now it's just it's completely changed so yeah it's nice it's nice having the ability to do this cool so and third world problems yeah, we can't, we can't see true. the screen in the sun. I know, <laughs> I know. Definitely awesome. true. Oh, I cool. probably just need a new screen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a step back. I'm gonna let you share um, uh, the value that that you're gonna bring today. Um, if anybody's got any questions, feel free to stick them in the comments. If you're watching this live, um, if you join us later on and you're watching the replay, then feel free again just to stick the comments in. Any questions you've got. Mark is in the group. Um, he will he will try and pick them up, and if not, I will direct him to him, uh, and he'll be able to, to do that. And he's got a very special uh, bonus for those people in our group today, so make sure that you, you stay till the end to pick that up too. So uh, let me just pull that screen up for you, Mark, and uh, Looks good. fire away. Brill, brill. Yeah, hopefully everyone can see that screen there. So I'm going to be talking a little bit today about, obviously, online marketing and how you can kind of utilize systems to scale your business a bit more and what type of things you need to be thinking about when you are looking to kind of scale an online business 
um, what I call it, we've got like three core aspects that you need to have in place to be able to scale a business. And normally I work a lot with kind of online coaches in that community, but today, because I know we've got different types of um, you know, entrepreneurs in Dean's group, kind of made this a little bit more, so it can fit everyone, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, cool. So um, let's just get into it, I guess. So what you'll be learning today is you'll be learning about obviously building frameworks to get results in your business and why it's important to build an audience, why it's important to be driving traffic to your offers and also utilizing things like sales funnels and marketing funnels rather than websites to actually make the sale for your business and the power of them as well. So if you're currently, you know, have a website and maybe you've spent a lot of money on it, but it's just not getting you any results, then maybe it's looking at the other option of how we can utilize sales funnels to get you better results in your business. And that's exactly what we've been working with Dean on to um, you know, build out his sales funnels for his business. And as Dean mentioned, for anyone that hangs around to the end, I'm going to be giving you guys a bit of a little free bonus gift there as well. So um, Dean's already given me an excellent introduction. To be honest, I don't think I could say it much better than that. So um, yeah, I work with online entrepreneurs, online business owners, ultimately to help them systemize and scale their businesses hence the business name. So I try, I always like that old saying, um, it does what it says on the tin. <laughs> so that's why I try to name the business in that regard. Um, but I've been an online entrepreneur now for five, five years um, doing specifically this niche. Before all this, I tried so many other businesses, so many other business models, tried so many jobs in general, got my degree in um, entrepreneurship um, in the UK. And again, I just, couldn't find anything that I really enjoyed doing until I found this because this aligned with my life goals. As Dean said, what, what was it? What's your saying, Dean? Build a business around your life. Is that the yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. Too many people try and build a business and then fit their life around it. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think you should always build your life and then try yeah. and fit your business around it. Yes, exactly. So that's exactly what I was trying to do without even knowing that, I guess, in a way. And realize like what type of lifestyle do I want to have now and also when I obviously get older, I have family and stuff as well, and trying to find a business model that fits that. Um, so I didn't end up, you know, 20 years time hating what I do pretty much. And that's also something I help other people focus on because it does come down to a lot about your offer, the type of business you're building, the systems you've got in place, the team you leverage as well, all these things. So there's quite a lot that comes into it with that. But yeah, so um Ultimately, we're just going to move on to this really. So with a lot of people, these a lot of people resonate with these kind of four key points here, whereas most people do just rely on luck to bring in new leads and clients because they don't have some type of predictable system that they can use to do that, okay? In luck, I mean like relying on referrals, relying on word of mouth, posting randomly on social media and just crossing your fingers and hope somebody sees it and likes it and then gets in touch, that type of look, okay? It's not really any real system to it in place. Um, but, you know, as, as this next bullet point says, most people have an incredible business. They have an incredible offer, something that can really, really help people get them results. You may even have a few cases and testimonials of people that you have worked with. It could be close friends. It could be, you know, people you have getting from word of mouth. And but you're still struggling on the scale because you haven't got that system in place, and um, you you're not following any type of specific strategy to do that with no real focus on like marketing your business like through a specific strategy and system, and also this last bullet point because of those previous three most people feel like they have no time, and yet they're trying to run around do all these things and yet the bank balance doesn't reflect how much time they're putting into the business okay. Again, we can kind of counteract that with utilizing systems and marketing and funnels and everything we're going to be talking about today. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Right. So obviously, if you're here looking to create a business that produces predictable results, you're in the right place. If you want to get more leads and start creating sales online, you're in the right place as well. And if you also want to be a business or business owner, and um, whether or not you are a coach or a consultant or just some type of entrepreneur that your, that you or your business is positioned more of the more of an expert in the eyes of your followers, and then again you're in the right place because that whole expert positioning. I mean, in the modern, if you think about businesses now, so many more businesses are gearing towards the people in their business. They're they're not just selling a product or a service anymore. They are trying to become leaders, motivate people, inspire people, and you know, and really 
because sales is a people thing, you know. Um, I mean, one of my favorite examples is like Russell Brunson from ClickFunnels. You know, people don't buy ClickFunnels, they buy Russell Brunson, <laughs> ultimately. You know, a ClickFunnels is just a thing that he sells. But because he's positioned himself as an expert and as a leader, and he's built his tribe, he's built his audience, now all these people flock to him and buy whatever he puts in front of them. So that's definitely what I love about him. So on to the next one. So obviously a little bit about why you should be online, obviously billions of people on the internet. And not only that, now obviously there's a lot of other countries still that don't have internet, believe it or not, but it's rolling out more and more to more and more people around the world, okay? So these numbers are just gonna get more and obviously with an aging population as well, these numbers are just gonna get more and more and more. And most people think my, most people, well, a lot of people I speak to say, say to us like, my ideal clients aren't online. You know, they're not online because they're too old. Or like, they, people even say like, oh, if you're over 55 or something, you're not online, but oh, you're definitely not on social media. No, that's a young person's game. But obviously that's not the way it is. And um, most people are ultimately online. And that, that's a, I can't remember exactly where I got that statistic from, but 95% of adults in the UK between 16 and 74 are recent internet users. So if you're not online, you definitely need to be, that's for sure. I think I think one of the things that was a real shock for me, because I, I kind of had that bit of uh, an idea as well. So lots of my clients are either, you know, they're entrepreneurs, they're either business owners or the CEOs or senior people in organizations. And I was like, well, those people are not likely to be on social media. But actually they are. In fact, when they when they are not at work, in other words, when they're not building their business, that that that's when they're scrolling, you know, when they've got 10 minutes to themselves or they're having a coffee or that's when they're on social media. And actually that's when they're not thinking about all the day to day stuff in their business, but they might be thinking about their business strategies or, um, so that was a bit of a shift for me as well. Um, to think about, well, you know, other people that I, that I'm going to get as clients, are they likely to be on some of these social media channels? Yeah, the answer is always yes, because they're a human being at the end of the day. <laughs> and everyone, human being, we're all social animals. So you want to be on, you want to be what everyone else is on social platforms, even if you only have a handful of friends or family members on there, but you still want to see what's happening. You still want to be sociable, because obviously with the online world, although it is making us, I guess, more, um, more connected as a world, like it does you might not see friends and family as much physically anymore, face to face. So that's why we utilize social media to kind of stay in touch with people. But yeah, everyone, most, not, almost everyone um, is on it, yeah. And that, that number's probably just gonna go up and up and up as well. So obviously with this, with marketing, um, as you know, a lot of people do come to me and they might say like, you know, they wanna have hit hundred hundred thousand dollars in the next type of you know six weeks type of thing and the company making zero because they think that it's just kind of like there's a magic pill out there there's a magic bullet or something but ultimately it's not how it works it is a long game and pretty much here is why it's a long game because of the customer journey and this this applies to no matter what business you have and um, of some businesses will have a longer customer journey than others some will be shorter but ultimately if you are driving if you are doing online marketing and you're driving what we call a cold audience. So this is an audience that I've never heard from you before, never heard your product, cold, cold audience, to an offer. At the top end, only 3% of people are gonna buy that offer, like today, when they see it, immediately now type of thing. Okay, and 3% is high as well. It's anywhere between one and 3%. But if we keep nurturing those leads, those people that are seeing our offers, you know, over the next 90 days, we will certainly, because we have, started to build more no like and trust with those people obviously we increase increased conversion rate so more of those people will buy and then over the next six months again more and more and more but that there's always going to be a pool of people that just never ever buy so that's just how it is um with online marketing with marketing in general which i'm sure you'll agree so that brings us on to the etf framework framework and this is a framework that i've kind of developed based on of working with a lot of different companies out there. And when I tell you about it, it's going to make perfect sense. Okay, you're going to be like, yeah, okay, is that, that's obvious, that makes um, obvious um, why that is, why that works. So the first letter A stands for audience, the next one stands for traffic, and the final F stands for funnels. And 
the way I look at it is if your business doesn't have one of these three core um, areas, then it's going to kind of suffer in some way, shape or form. So there's a lot of business out there that could, that get their funnels set up. There's a lot of business that want to say, yeah, I want to have my funnel set up. I want to get it systemized. I want to get it automated. I want this you know, fantastic thing, but they don't have any audience. They don't know how to drive traffic. And so then they're stuck. Okay, they're like, okay, I don't know what to do now. Um, I've got this amazing tool. And this is with small business owners. I mean, I fell into this as well. Dean, you've probably fallen into this bracket. So many other people have fallen into this bracket. We all build websites and then we forget to send people to the website. We just think it will build it and they will come at the cheat. It's like it doesn't work like that. Yeah. yeah. And I think that, you know, that, that again, talking about, you know, different perspectives and shifts. That was another mindset shift for me because ultimately you think of the, the website as being like the, the marketing brochure, the sales brochure. Um, but, but if you don't give it to anybody, you know, who's, who's going to go and have a look at it? And it's yeah. like, well, you, you know, it's, it, it's there, but who knows it's there until yeah. people start, you start sending people to look at it. Yeah, it's like ordering a million brochures from a print company and then them just sitting on your desk in the office. It's like no one's looking at it. What else is that? And that's pretty much what it is. It's not sat on the desk, but it's sat on your computer instead. You, you're the only one clicking view, view, which is why we need to have the audience and the traffic strategies in place to drive it um, to wherever, wherever your offers are. Um, but yeah, we're first going to touch on the audience side of things, see how to build up your audience, things to look out with audience and why it's important, and then move on to the traffic and funnels and so on. So audience, obviously building your audience is ridiculously important because if you think of your audience as your pool of people, like you know, when you're first getting started, nobody knows about you. But after you've been in business for a year, two years, three years, like you start to build your audience, you start to build the people that follow you, that know about you, that are starting to trust you, that like you. And your audience can be things like your email list, your people in on your Facebook group, on your Facebook page, on your LinkedIn following. All these things are your audience. And ultimately, the bigger your audience, the more opportunities you get. And opportunities, I don't just mean sales. I mean, if you want to get on somebody's podcast, for example, they're going to look at your social media profiles. How big of an audience does that person have? You know, because they're looking for what benefit does it bring to me to have them on my, pro, on my um, you know, podcast as well? Because then can I tap into their audience? That's what they're thinking as well. Same thing with like other um um, what's it called PA? What's the word I'm looking for here, Dean? Um, public and PR, PR, that's the word, with other yeah. PR type of opportunities. They're always looking at your audience size and stuff like that as well. So it's going to impact your immediately sales because if you do have an audience like an email list, that's super powerful because it allows you to immediately market to a huge pool of people. So somebody who has an email list of 50 compared to somebody who has an email list of 10,000 people. Who's going to get better results, do you think? You know, if, if they just suddenly create a new offer or if they want to test a new concept or a new idea, the 10,000 person with 10,000 people on their email list can test it to 10,000 people with a click of a button, whereas the other people only have a small audience. And the bigger your audience as well, the more authority that you, the, well, I guess the more perceived authority you have. And you may not be the best at what you do. You, know, you may not even be in the top 10, but if you have an audience, people perceive you as being an expert if you've captured that huge audience out there and that's another huge factor with building your audience and ultimately you make more sales and you build more know like and trust which are super important when it comes to making sales and building relationships with potential clients um so how to build your audience the first thing you need to understand is who is your audience who is your ideal client avatar okay and don't just say everyone that's what I, that's what most businesses want to say yeah my product or service can help everyone even if that is the case, always think to yourself of, you know, help the, help the few before you can help the many type of thing. And um, be really, really specific with a niche. Be really, really specific with a, with a pain point or a product or service that you can offer. And um, because not only will that help you stand up more to that particular niche and they will come to you more, but it'll also help you actually sell that product or service. And even for a higher value as well, because if you're seen as an expert at solving at um, working with a specific niche, with a specific problem, helping them solve that very specific problem, then you know you become more of an expert at that. And I think a good example of this is like if you go to the doctors and you know you and you you need some type of you know, brain surgery, 
are you going to go and get your GP to do it or are you going to go get a neurosurgeon to do it? It's like, when your surgeon gets paid probably a hell of a lot more <laughs> and they're the one who was trusted to do the job a lot more and you know they, they've niched and that's why they get more um that's why people want them to do the job because they've niched they're an expert at that so that's the first thing the second thing is where do they hang out that's obvious but very often overlooked it's like where do they hang out just just get a pen and paper i'll go over that a little bit more with you later on as well but literally get a pen and paper where did my people hang out? What groups are they in? You know, um, are they online? Are they offline? Um, you know, what do they enjoy doing? So really just work on your ideal client avatar here. And then the last one, what can you help them with? And um, I mean, obviously that's, it should be obvious in a way, but sometimes it's just about actually packaging it a little bit differently. So packaging your offer in ways that resonate with the ideal client more and a lot more focused in that way. And um, because there's a lot of people out there who, Yes, they can help people. They have the tools, they have the resources, but the way they package it, the way they present the offer isn't always going to resonate with them very well because it's too generic a lot of the time. Um, right, so what's this next one? So how to build your audience. So obviously creating valuable content on social media is one way to do that. Um, talking about what type of problems they have, what type of pain points they have, and you can answer them. So obviously like what Dean's doing in the group, you know, talking about a lot of things that he can help you guys with in here, talking about, mindset problems, procrastination, and all those other things, and you know, providing that content, not even just sharing it to you guys in the group, but sharing it on other social media channels as well, and also to his email list too. Um, and the more you can do this, the more you are positioned as an authority in your niche. So if you think about that, uh, there's a lot of entrepreneurs now, call them entrepreneurs. If you think about people who have built up like Instagram channels, they've built up Instagram channels like 50,000 followers, and they're not selling a single product. <laughs> like they haven't got anything to sell at all. But maybe it's they're just like um, in the beauty, maybe it's doing the hair, maybe it's doing the fitness, maybe it's doing the cars, you know, something like this. But as soon as they start selling something, you know, as soon as the, somebody, they have any offer whatsoever, they've immediately got 50,000 people to sell it to. And they've actually immediately positioned themselves as an authority in that niche, in that topic that they're doing around. It could be travel, you know, it could be anything. But it, it is, this is why it's important to build your authority um, and the audience in your niche as well. And if you think about things like that, they do become local celebrities. The people look out for them, you know, so they might see them out and about and like, wow, that person's, you know, they're on Instagram, they're, they're this person. I mean, here in Spain, where I am in the Marbella area, there's people I follow on, on, on Instagram in this region. And um, I keep thinking, wouldn't it be cool if one day I just kind of saw them? I don't know why it'd be cool whatsoever, <laughs> but it kind of would be because you know they've got huge followings. I see them all the time with like really great photos and stuff like that. But yeah, I think that they are like a bit of a celebrity, I guess, to, to me for some reason. I don't know why, but it just seems like they are. And uh, which means getting your getting your face out there uh, because people remember faces as well. So that's another thing. Like don't just hide in the in the darkness, really. The more you're on social, the more you're kind of getting your face out there on videos or whatever, then the more people are going to remember who you are and the more you're going to build your audience. Any, anything to add to that, Dean? I think just, just on your point about, um, you know, growing an audience with not necessarily having anything to sell. So uh, here's a couple of examples. One was um, just people that I've kind of picked up. So during the pandemic, there's a there's an Instagram account that literally was just sharing recipes. So, you know, just like a, I think the videos are no I longer than like bread. <laughs> yeah, it's like thirty yeah. seconds of like you know it was sped up effectively, but it was just like you know you do these things and and then you end up with this. Um, yeah. And they they started in the pandemic. You know, their yeah. following's gone through the roof because obviously people. That's they were helping solve a problem. People were like, yeah. well, I can't really go out and do all this stuff, what I've got to do with my time. Um, and and that they, they had developed a huge following and then they've started. I've noticed just recently, you know, they, they've they've put out a book. So of all of some of the recipes that they developed, they've put into a book and now they're obviously selling that, but they're selling it to, like you cool. said, to an audience of, you know, whatever it is, 20, 30,000 yeah. people that followed them during that period. Another quick example was. Uh, I actually know this. Just two girls uh, based in Nottingham. They um, they set up a, a page that that was. I think it's called something like um, 
it's called Adventures Disclosed or something like that. I can't remember what the title of their page was, but it was literally, it's just photographs of them in places they've been on their travels. Um, and literally, like, they went from, like, zero, set up the page, went from zero to, like, three or 4,000 followers in, like, rapid time. Wow. And, but they're not selling anything. They're not doing anything. They're just sharing photographs of places they've been. Yeah. That's awesome, isn't it? It's so powerful. If you know how to do it, then that's really cool, that. Yeah, definitely, definitely build your audience is key. Um, here's just some more tips on, like, creating good content um, when you are sharing it. And content's important, not just for social media, not just for, like, that type of stuff, but also for, like, keeping your email list engaged, staying in front of your your current audience and positioning yourself as an expert on an ongoing basis. So, again, I'll go back to Russell Brunson. You know, he does lots of videos. He does lots of webinars. He does lots of trainings. He's, he's got YouTube. You know, he's putting out a lot of good quality content like like this, and it's all him on camera as well for a lot of the time, anyways. So, and, but the more the, the more you know about the pain points and the problems your your ideal client has, obviously you can create content around their pain points. So, make sure that you understand what problems that you're looking to solve when it comes to them. What questions uh, might these people ask if they were speaking to you? So, if you sit down with consultations, are there any frequently asked questions? That's probably a good one to add there. And I always like to do the whole test of if you go to Google and you think you're an ideal client of yours, you know, what are they typing in the Google? Are they typing in how much does something cost? How to you know, solve a particular problem? This or that, you know, comparisons and stuff. Because this all depends upon your niche. And you know, if you're, you're selling a software or something, people might be saying, which one's better, this one or that one? And again, if you create a blog, or even if you're targeting people that were interested in them softwares, that you create a blog advising them on that. Say, okay, now you are somebody who gives great advice to help them solve a problem. So they they, they can make um, join your email list, come follow you on social, subscribe to your YouTube channel, whatever it is. That but that, then you're building your audience again. And um, same things with the best of or the top of you know like those travel girls, Dean. They might create like you know, the top ten destinations for skiing, <laughs> something like that. You know, if they've been on their travel, and people are going to trust them and read their blogs. And again, they're just positioning themselves more as an expert. And finally, this tool I haven't used it myself in a while, actually. But Answer the Public is a great tool. You can type in your niche, and it, it brings up the type of questions people are asking on Google. So if you're into like the weight loss niche, you know, type in weight loss, and it literally pulls the type of questions that people are asking on google and you can then go create content around those questions and then um, again just position and not just content you can even literally create coaching programs or products or anything that solve these type of questions that people are asking as well right so a little bit about being omnipresent omnipresent just means pretty much being everywhere because ultimately the chances are your prospects aren't just in one area they're not just on facebook they're on Facebook and Instagram, they're on YouTube, they're on LinkedIn as well, they're on Google, they're on blogs, they're on everywhere like this. So I guess with a lot of small businesses, it's hard to be omnipresent at first because you've only got so many hours in the day. And then obviously it does cost money to become omnipresent. So really just try to pick a handful of the best places. Maybe it's like the top three places where your ideal clients are online and see if you can just become more active in those places. And utilize things like ads as well. So if you have got some type of budget, can you set up a Facebook ad or an Instagram ad that makes you omnipresent without taking up any more of your time as well? And if you are doing social media, think about can you re can you use some type of software to repurpose content? So you're not just sharing on Facebook, but you're now you're sharing that piece of content on Instagram and in, um, LinkedIn as well, potentially in Pinterest or Twitter. So you're really repurposing things. But it just will go a long way towards making you more of an expert and building your audience um, online. I think from a social media perspective, one of the things that really helped me was to be omnipresent because you, you, you're right. When I first looked at it, I'm like looking at all of these different places and saying, well, it takes forever to create a post for Facebook and then, you know, put something on Instagram and then remember I've got to share that on LinkedIn and I've got to upload my video <laughs> to YouTube. And But lots of the... Um, uh, lots of the social media management tools like, you know, Canva has its own, Publer is another one. Um, <clears throat> lots of those allow you to place the same um, content or multiple pieces of content so you can schedule it in different places. Yeah. So one of the things that really helped me was to be to have an idea of what I wanted to do for the for the month or the week or however you want to do it and then just spend, 
you know, a few hours creating the content and scheduling it for the next 30 days or whatever, and then you just leave it and it goes. Yeah, exactly. I quite like as well with the social media tools um, where you can re- reschedule the same content. So one thing I'm kind of looking at doing myself actually at the moment is is like utilizing lead magnets and things like that where we reschedule the same content like at least once a month. So let's say we have a Facebook community group or on LinkedIn or somewhere and we just kind of you know, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. we share this piece of content. It's the same piece of content. It's a lead traffic, a lead generating content because we're constantly building our audience, more new people are going to see it every time. And not only that, with algorithms, like what, two to 5% of people see it in the first place. It's like, you know, so you need to share things multiple times anyways to try and get people to see the thing, which is one of the cases. But yeah, it's a little tip. Um, Creating an irresistible offer. um, Again, I work with people a lot with this because it's such an important part to growing any business out there. You really have to look at your offer and try to make it as irresistible as as much as a no-brainer as physically possible for people. Then say, look, it's it. I can I can't not not have this type of thing. I have to have this in my life. So think about what your USP is. What makes you unique in your industry. And think about things that you don't like about your industry for that that method and why you don't like them and what you're doing instead to kind of counteract those things you don't like. That's a great USP. The benefits, obviously, think don't talk about the features. Talk about the benefits. Talk about the results that people are going to be getting, okay? Just don't sell the features. No one cares what they can do. They care what it can do for their tip thing. It's the result that they really care about, which leads on to the ultimate goals what's the big goals that they want what's the outcome goals that these benefits are going to lead to for them and also if you create some type of urgency and uh, urgency and scarcity into your offers that really helps as well such as you know i've got this great promotion on but it's only available for 10 people and it ends next tuesday so you know there's urgency and the scarcity in there as well so that type of offer works really well and um, again people think it doesn't work but it really does work and massively works having both those factors in the guarantee is a huge part as well. So how can you create a guarantee that helps reduce the risk of the of it not working for them? So if somebody wants to buy your product, hire your services, let's say you know you you have um you know let's just see your marketing agency for example, and you say look I'm going to generate I'm going to help you generate leads, but I guarantee that we will generate you know, at least twenty leads in the next thirty days. Otherwise, you don't pay us a penny. And it's like okay, that's a really great guarantee. What have we got to lose? Either I'm going to get twenty leads. Oh, I don't pay, which is a great guarantee. So it, it's at least allow them to try you out in, like, in that regard. Risk versus reward as well. People are always weighing those two up. So how can you reduce the risk but raise the reward ultimately? So what you know, make it, if you reduce the risk, it will ultimately do that. But obviously having the guarantee in there will massively help with reducing the risk factor from there as well. Just on that, one of the things that, that I learned just from a sales and marketing perspective rather than a, as well as a, a mindset perspective in terms of shifting the way you look at things is lots of people are looking for return on investment. So if I spend this much money, um, what, what, will I, what will it do for me? Um, yeah. But I, I often, when I'm talking to people, I, I flip it on its head because I think I ask them to think about what, what they've, what they've lost. So what's it cost you Yeah. doing what you're already doing? What do you think it's cost you? So, you know, as an argument, um, let's say somebody says, well, I'm, I'm trying to scale my business to six figures. And I'm currently at $50,000 a year. Mm-hmm. And then the answer is, okay, so how long have you wanted to scale to six figures? Well, the last five years. Okay, so not doing, you know, not getting coached, not not implementing this strategy, not doing this has already cost you $250,000 Yeah. in the last yeah. five years. If we, if, if what I'm, if what we are offering can help you get there, then why wouldn't you spend the five thousand dollars whatever the program is or whatever the investment is and and letting people know that actually there's a cost to inaction so rather than roi think about the coi what's the cost of not doing it because ultimately it's going to be another fifty thousand dollars by the end of this year it's interesting that's really good i actually had forgot about that often dean i'm glad you reminded me because you know i guess you could play around with the guarantee on that as well so I guarantee that you won't waste another year and miss out on another opportunity to make your six-figure income <laughs> um, yeah. you know, over these next 12 months. Um, yeah, that's cool. I like that, Dean. So moving on to traffic now. So obviously, audience section was quite big there. So traffic, we just need to understand how to drive traffic to your offers. So once you have the audience, it's like, okay, well, now how do we get that those people 
to go to my offer, to see my offer, to watch my videos where I am presenting about my offer, to you know, visit the website, to visit the pages and so on and so on. Um, and if you want to build a predictable and scalable business, then you've probably got to start using paid ads if you aren't using paid ads already, because with paid ads, you can really get into the numbers. You know if you spend $1,000 on ads every month, it might bring in your business, you know, 100, 200 leads. You convert those leads at the 10%, so you're making your 10 to 20 new clients every month. And that's what we can do with ads. With other, with other systems like social media, it becomes a little bit more guesswork. But really, when we when we get the numbers from ads, we can um, get much more predictable results. But a little word of warning, obviously, with ads, most of your marketing ads will fail. All right, um, and you know, in in agencies and our agency, it's all about testing. You'll test, you know, you know, 20, 30, 40 different types of creatives, and maybe even offers as well every month, if not more. And you you try to find the one that works best. Which of these ads are working best? And that's ultimately one of the things you've got to do. But you can start from a small business and budget with just um with just testing a few types of different variables. And the the main factor here is although nine out of ten fail. The one that works, you can just kind of leverage that one that works and just turn up the ad spend. And once you have that one that's working and it's it's, it's giving you a positive return on investment, then again, you just keep turning it up um, until it stops working for you to test a different type of creative. But paid, paid ads is definitely such a huge subject. That's that whole kind of Russell Brunson one funnel away, isn't it? That you, you kind I guess of, so. He, yeah. he's, he's playing with ultimately changing the funnels, seeing which one works, changing the copy, etc. Because ultimately, he knows that not all of them are going to work, but the one that does yeah. is probably going to make him a substantial amount of money. Yeah, and agencies like his, business like his, do churn out ridiculous amount of different funnels and offers. You, you probably have, don't even hear about most of them because they didn't work. <laughs> it's like they just don't turn it off before too many people see it. Um, but yeah, that's ultimately what happens. Right, so... Um, yeah, so again, I don't know if we touched on this earlier on, Dean or not. Yeah, we did touch on it. Yeah, about the whole um, the customer journey. And again, we've got the customer journey on the left there. So 3% of the way to buy that out, 90% over the next, um, sorry, 7% over the next 90 days, and then like up to 40% over the next six months. This is like how often people buy. But ultimately, the funnel looks like what it looks like on the right hand side there. So we've got a big audience coming at the top, which is called audience. If you have never heard of you before, um, you know that, that's bringing them into your world. Then we kind of warm them up a little bit through through could be content, could be getting them to watch a video, could be you know, giving them a, a free PDF, and then obviously we we give them opportunity to push buy a product, buy a service. If they don't buy, then we can retarget them. But ultimately, the goal is to get them to become a customer. Okay, and that's the typical level of a fun that we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, where are your clients? I touched on this earlier on, but yeah, there's just a few other things you can think about with where your clients are. So the, the, the first idea, the Dream 100 idea, okay? This isn't like the Dream 100 prospects or, or leads that you want, but it's the Dream 100 people in your niche who have already got your clients. They may not be direct competitors. They could be indirect competitors, okay? People who um, offer a similar service, target the same niche. So for example, you know, Dean, is a mindset coach working with other coaches are part of his niche. You know, he helps other coaches to, you know, um, in areas that they need help with, but so do I. So I help them with the marketing. Dean helps them with their mindset. Okay, we, we can work together and we can utilize each other's kind of network. So if you think about what, who are the Dream 100 people that you can start following, that you can go and be part of their communities, that you can position yourself as an expert, I think the one good thing I like about this is like, if you think about Tony Robbins, that guy's got such a huge audience, it's unreal, but most people can't afford to hire his services. So if you are similar to, to Tony Robbins and you go and position yourself as somebody who is similar to him, can help with similar problems, you know, in a lower price point potentially, again, you can start attracting some of the people that can't afford his services, but they're interested in what he does still. That's a really powerful subject. And you can find these people in such like Facebook groups, you can find them at events, you can find them in associations as well. That could be clubs or anything like that too. So yeah, that's a, I would recommend just making a list in that case. So get a list and just literally think, maybe just go online, do some research and write down your dream up and all these Facebook groups that are out there as well. Um, so here's some general best practices and these apply for funnels as well. But again, I'm gonna touch on funnels in a minute. So whenever you're kind of doing marketing out there, Always make sure that the copy 
matches the funnel. So let's say you've got an advert. Your advert is like how to lose weight, okay? But then you, you send all these people to a page which is about how to build muscle. It's like, it doesn't match, okay? So really, that's a, that's a stupid example. I know it's, it's obvious, but it's still the same case. You know, try to make everything kind of match. The, so the flow is seamless from one step to the next when it comes from the traffic source itself all the way into the funnel to kind of buying at the very end, which leads us on to embrace testing. You've got to really, really test a lot of things to kind of to optimize. You can get good results without testing, but if you want to really, really get the most out of your marketing, get the most return on investment, you really need to start testing more as well. And um, speak to your audience and speak like your audience. Again, don't use language that your audience doesn't use. So I've worked with companies in the past too in the financial sector, um, you know, investments. They use languages that they understand, but their audience really hasn't got a clue what they mean. So you've really got to sometimes dumb down your language a bit, um, and you know, so everyone understands it. I think there's like a saying which is, you know, the fifth grade level language is the most universal language out there. So everyone understands. If you think of like a, somebody in the fifth grade, however, however old they are, um. That language is the best type of language to use. And make sure the copy matches the images used. That's for like your ads, if you're using Facebook ads and stuff, using strong headlines and that grab attention. Um, <laughs> Multi relevant scores. And that's again, when it comes to Facebook ads, it's like th there's a score that they can put in for how relevant this is for the audience that you're sending it out to. Have strong and catchy call to actions and use controversy and curiosity. So that's a really important one. The curiosity factor is huge because if you, if people can, say just read read your little your little blurb about you know watching a webinar or something and they already know what you're going to talk about like specifically they do they won't watch it but if you hint on the pain points and make them curious about wanting to learn more then that's where they'll click and they'll become a lead type of thing so curiosity is a huge huge part of it when it comes to and um, your, your advertising that was a nice little pop up there, Dean. I wasn't expecting that. Say, <laughs> like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> so, anyways, the, the last factor is funnels. Okay, so funnels will become your business in a lot of the times because your funnel is, is where you're driving a lot of traffic to. Your funnel can act as your sales team. So, in the olden days, you might have been driving traffic to a phone number when you had loads of people on the phone answering calls and stuff. Whereas now, the funnel, online marketing funnels, can take care of a lot of that for you. Um, it's the one thing that all your efforts go towards driving the traffic into. So all this traffic you're generating, all this audience you're building and stuff, we drive all the traffic into this funnel that nurtures the lead, that sells them on your product and services, that scales them up your, your product and service kind of value ladder, and um, ultimately you know, keeps the relationship strong in, in that. But I'll give you a few examples of that in a little bit as well. So if you don't know what a sales funnel is, here's a quick example of what a sales funnel looks like on the right-hand side there. Lots of leads at the top coming in, and ultimately right down at the bottom, we've only got a few hand-picked people that have made it all the way to becoming like your know, paying clients. So it's a step-by-step -step process that allows you to bring your potential customers one step closer to your offer, and a buying decision through a series of marketing actions like automated emails, like pages, like videos articles and landing pages because in your funnel you've got you've got the awareness stage which is you building awareness building your audience and um, you've got your, like your nurture stage as well in there which is like once you've got the audience let's nurture these leads and then, and then obviously you've got the final stage which is kind of like let's close these leads let's turn the ones who have nurtured into paying clients and that's ultimately the type of funnel we're bringing people down so there, there's two types types of funnels and well there's a lot of types of funnels but these are the but most funnels fit into these two categories, okay? The second one doesn't get talked a lot about because that's not so well known in the industry. And it's something that I work with clients more specifically with. So I'm gonna to touch on that one later on. But the first type of funnel you've got is what I call like a normal value ladder style funnel. And I'll give you an example of that here. So this is a normal value ladder step of funnel. Um, so on the, on the on obviously on the y-axis, I think it's the y-axis, is that the y-axis, Dean? <laughs> oh, yeah. Y and X axis, yeah. So that's the value. So how much is this valued, okay, to the client? So that's like, you know, how valuable is this to somebody? If it's like a freebie, a lead magnet, some type of little guide that's not as valued compared to a done for you service where you just do it all for them, okay? But obviously as the value increases, so does the price increase, all right? So that's what this is here. That's a typical value ladder as we call it. And here's an example of a dentist. So we've got teeth cleaning, 
Okay, it's um, low value, low price. Whitening, a little bit more value, a little more high price. Um, retainers, so getting like uh, dental work done, more value, more price. Cosmetic stuff, so that could be you know, implants, stuff like that. Again, more value, more price. And again, it just goes up and up and up. So the higher the value that somebody puts on it, the more price it can be. Um, and again, here's another one from a gym trainer. So free trial, monthly membership, fitness classes, personal training type of thing on that side of stuff. But ultimately, the, the funnel that works is you've got your, you've got your step one, which is your, your first step here. Okay, so this is literally step one, which is what we call the bait. So what are we going to use as bait? So if we think we're fishing, okay, what bait are we putting on that hook that our fish are going to want to eat? Okay, if we put the wrong type of bait on there, people aren't going to take a bite and they're not going to come into our world. So this is where you've really got to know about your ideal clients, their pain points, their wants, their desires, their goals, and then create something that really grabs their attention around that pain point, around that desire. And these things can be things like ebooks, um, guides, webinars, videos, trainings, cheat sheets, checklists, really, really simple things to create. And, and again, they all work with different types of funnels that we have in, in um, you know, in, at our disposal. So a webinar, for example, would be a webinar funnel, an ebook could be a lead magnet funnel, and um, checklist again, you could use the lead magnet funnels and so on. So these are all really important things. So when, it, when you're thinking about, well, how can I grab the attention of my audience? Just literally think about this. Think about that, that the, the fishing analogy. What can I put on the end of the hook to really grab their attention? And then the next thing with this general typical funnel is you want to sell people um, what we call a front end offer. This is a low ticket offer normally, because um, if you think about, we want to scale our people up through the funnel, sell them a little bit, sell them the next step, the next step, the next step, like the dentist did. Okay, so they went in with the the, the low ticket, and um, the free, the low ticket, the slightly more expensive, all the way up to like high end cosmetic cost. So again, things like this could be books, courses, consultations, trials, and stuff as well. Just lower ticket products. And then you go at the middle ticket, which are slightly more value, as I've said, um, courses, consultations, and products. And um, back end, this is the high ticket stuff like doing for you services. So the way the way this full, this typical value ladder funnel has worked is you'd want to nurture the lead through each step before selling them your ten grand done for you services, for example. So you know you might get you might build their interest from a freebie, nurture the lead on the on the other steps by selling them lower ticket products and services so they so they trust you more, so they build that no light and trust more, and then scale them up to your higher ticket stuff. And that's exactly what Russell Brunson did with click funnels. And this is exactly like the main funnel that he talks about in, in click funnels as well with his business model. So here's a couple of examples here that I want to kind of run on. So this is utilizing funnels more. And um, again a lot of people when they're selling a product and they don't know much about funnels, they'll just sell a product, okay? The product could be something like a $27 product there, okay? Which Tom does in this case. He doesn't utilize sales funnels. He's just driving traffic straight to one product, and that's it. But what Jenny does is she drives traffic to the same $27 product, but then she has another little bump offer product, which she converts to a 20% conversion rate. And the bump offer just means, like, on the checkout page, when they're about to put in their details, it just gives them the option to buy something else, something that complements the same product that they just purchased. And of course, some people are going to be like, oh yeah, that sounds great. I'm just going to add that onto the order now. And then they, they'll order it. And then again, Jenny does that and increases 20% conversion rate. But now once people purchase that little bundle there, on the next page they see is like a one-time offer, what we call. So this is a simple, okay, now you've got that. Now you need this. It's like the next step of the value ladder. Okay, so we're taking that next step. And again, we'll get a certain percentage of people that buy that will buy this. And ultimately, as you can see, the average order value increases the, because we've got this series of multiple products and steps, which means Jenny can spend thirty-eight pounds or dollars, whatever you want to call it, thirty-eight pounds to acquire a, a customer and break even on her ad spend. But Tom can only spend 27 tops. Okay, so Jenny has more leverage. She can spend more on ads, which means that she can beat Tom and you know just kill him really when it comes to the competitiveness of how because it's pretty much whoever can spend the most wins in ads like this. So the fact that Jenny can spend up to 38 pounds per ad and still break even per client, but Tom can only spend 27. So if, if Tom was to spend 38 pounds per per um customer 
on ads, he would lose out £11 for every customer he purchased. So how long could his business run if for every customer that purchases £27, he was losing 11 Couldn't run very long. Okay. But with Jenny, if she was acquiring customers at 27 she would be profiting £11, which again, she would just turn that up all day long. She would just keep spending more and more and more um, ultimately. Here's another quick example here, um, which instead of having a lower ticket product at the front end, we've now got a freebie, okay? So like a free giveaway, an ebook, a guide of some sort. And um, as you can see here, Tom converts at like a 1% conversion rate, but Jenny is giving away something free at first. We convert that. From those people who have purchased that free thing, a certain percentage then go on to buy the next product. And then the same as before, they buy the next one, then the next one. So like Jenny's total order average value here is obviously over £2,000, whereas Tom's is only £1,350 for the same traffic source, okay? Um, so that's another benefit there. But not only is Jenny making more money, she's also building an email list. She's built out her email list by 2,000 people here, okay? But Tom's only got 50 people on his email list. So again, she can now remarket to those people for, for as long as she possibly can and sell them loads of other products and services that she has here. This is the quick comparison here. I know we're kind of running out of time, so I'm trying to speed this up a bit. Um, so obviously total order value here by Tom is, is less than Jenny's. Uh, only 50 people who has purchased is not genuine leads and is only genuine customers, which is fine. But ultimately, if we look back at the previous step, about only 3% of people are ready to buy today, then 7% and then so on and so on. We've got to generate customers, but also leads because leads become our future customers. Okay, they're not customers today, but they become our future customers. Um, Jenny here, she's building out her email list. She's providing value immediately. She demonstrates her expertise by provide, prov providing upfront value in that free thing that she's giving away and has an opportunity to build a long-term relationship with everyone who opts in, those 2,000 people. And again, she can actually retarget all those people, who all those 2,000 people, and we target them the same $27 offer or a different offer that might resonate more with them Again, through ads or through her email sequences at very little cost, if not no cost. So it's hugely beneficial for Jenny that there. So I just want to quickly touch on the reverse sales funnel. So as you saw previously, the, the typical sales funnel follows these steps. But this is something I work with my clients a lot on, okay? Because if, depending upon your business and your business model, if you want to sell some type of high-end, high-ticket offer, but you don't want to go through this whole stage of the funnel with people, what we can do instead is we can bring people in with it with like a freebie offer at first, which is a low ticket offer, something down here. But then we can immediately offer them something of the highest value. Okay, so this could be a done for you service, this could be coaching, consulting, like the highest value. And the reason we want to do that is because a certain percentage of people want that high value thing today. And when I work with my coaching clients, this is the type of system we offer. So we bring people in, we're building our leads by our low ticket sorry, by a low freebie offer or a really low ticket product or something like that. But then we are immediately getting them on a call and offering them the highest ticket product or service. If they then don't buy that high ticket thing or if they don't jump on the call, we can then just start offering them the next thing that's down, then the next step, then the next step. And wherever they bite, wherever they purchase, wherever they sign up, that's when we then start scaling them back up the value ladder, which is on the other side here, okay? So let's just say that they purchased on like the second step, then again, they're going to go up the second step until we get them back up to the higher ticket products and services there. Um, and then what this does, this maximizes the highest value thing that you can do for them, which is obviously the biggest value for you and the biggest value for them because it's the biggest price for you, but it's also the biggest price for them, the biggest value that you want. So the big, best comparison is like a done for you service, which is completely hands off for them compared to, you know, just telling them how to go and do it themselves. Telling them how to do it themselves is less value for them, probably less profit for you. They've got to then go do all the work themselves and figure it out, or they can just pay you 10 grand a month <laughs> and you can do it for them type of thing. And it's completely hands off for them. People value that a lot more. Um, but for those who can't afford that, that's where we bring them back down the sales funnel. So that's all I'm going to say on that for now um, on those type of things. But you've got, depending upon your business model, this one might be better than the other one. For example, this business model works well if you're running like a webinar, if you're doing challenges and stuff, or if you're doing like a, a, a call booking type of funnel, you just want to get people onto a call because you can't drive traffic into a webinar and then sell them like a, a $27 product because you will be massively unprofitable in your webinar and you will lose a lot of money. 
that's ultimately it. But if you were to drive traffic first to the $27 product and then scale it up, then that's the way you could do it. Yeah, one, one of the things that I learned something similar to this, this is the reason I think I like this model, um, not just because it's a fit for my, for my business, but I, I spent a period of time many years ago working in uh, advertising sales. So we were selling like advertising space um, to companies um, and our, uh, our sales director at the time, his strategy was always it's, it's far easier to ski downhill than it is uphill. <laughs> Um, yeah. And so what he used to say was, you offer the most expensive ad space that we have, you offer that to the individual. Uh -huh. And then if they're un unable to afford it, then you you start to work your way down until you get to a price point that's agreeable. Yeah. Um, and then you sell at that. Whereas if you start right at the bottom, they could potentially, from an advertising perspective, they could potentially say, okay, great, I'll buy that. And then you, they, but they might have bought something at $1,000 more yeah. if, you'd, if you'd offered it to them. Um, yeah. but because well, they might actually that, need they might actually need the more expensive thing but because yeah. you haven't offered them in the first place but like i don't even know it exists potentially yeah absolutely yeah. and you know if you wait they may still buy that but but it's going to take them six months to a year in order to get to that point potentially where they they, they find out that that's available and then it's like oh well now i'm on this i'll i'll leave i'll stay where i am or yeah um, and you missed out on that opportunity um yeah so, I think the other good thing about this as well is that if you are selling something at this high ticket, like three thousand, five thousand dollars or something, like you can spend three thousand, five thousand dollars on ads before you break even. Okay, so technically, it with with that with the 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 way advertising is going, it's becoming more and more expensive to acquire a customer and like generate leads. So you do need to have you do need to have some type of high ticket product or service that you can do there as well. Um, but again, it. It's just, it just work whatever's best for your business, I, I guess. But I just wanted to give the general overview of the options that you have with these types of funnels and different types of way of thinking of what funnel is best for you. Because with the other type of funnel, you know, this funnel, you've got to create low ticket products. You've got to create a bump offer. You've got to create this lower ticket, um, slightly you know, middle ticket product or service. Like, but if you if you're just a one man band and you you just want to focus on your high ticket offer. And this doesn't really matter to you as much yet, but down the line, you might want to build this type of system around, whereas this does matter to you. Generate leads, give them some bit of free value fund, and then sell them your high-ticket coaching program, sell them your high-ticket services or packages. Then if they're not ready for that, maybe you've got a lower-ticket group coaching or you know, uh, or a course that you can sell them or something like that. Um, but it doesn't mean you have to go and spend hours and hours and hours on selling, on creating you know, $27 products because ultimately, most of the products will fail. Most of the offers won't, won't convert well. But yeah, anyways, that's pretty much it, Dean, to be honest with you. And um, just a quick recap, obviously, of the ATF system there, but that's it for me. Yeah. So um, I hope everyone's learned a lot from that. I think I've covered a lot. And um, try to ram it in, to be honest with you, in the time frame we've had. But yeah, Dean, any, any questions? I think so. I, it's been, a, 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 like I've always said, uh, I think there's a ton of value in there. Um, you know, whether, whether you're starting out, whether you're looking to systemize or scale, um, there's there's elements of all of that process. Um, so you know, for the people in my group, if you if you've if you've joined my group in the last, I don't know, maybe twelve to eighteen months, then it's likely you came through a process that was developed by Mark and his team, because um, prior to that, um, I was I was using uh, uh, all of the things that Mark alluded to at the beginning. You know, organic traffic, referrals. That's not to say I didn't get business. Um, I did. But I didn't have a, a system in place that, that I could predict, okay, I've got X number of clients coming. Or I've got this many calls booked yeah. and scheduled in my diary for the coming week. I was every week starting from, right, okay, how do I generate some calls this week? How do I generate some new clients this month? Um, I, th I think me and you, me and you both, Dean, like the confidence that it gives you to see the numbers on a piece of paper. It's like, okay, well, if I spend $1,000 and I generate this many leads and I convert those leads into this package, and that gives me X result. Like if you know those numbers, like it just massively builds the confidence, doesn't it? And then you can clearly see the area of your, your, your journey, the customer journey that isn't working. Then you can say, okay, I need to focus on that because these numbers are great, but that conversion rate there is really bad. So let's focus on that area and improve that. 
it's like you know I, I, I play a lot of golf uh, this year I've got a real focus on trying to improve my game and um, get my scores down um, as you know both my, my sons are, are pro level players um, and I've, I've been talking to them and one of the things they said to me was um, so so what's your focus and I'm like well it's to get my scores down this year and he was like yeah but no but but what's your focus what you, you could, you know, you could spend all year practicing putting. Yeah. It, it, but is that the bit that's not letting? Is that the bit that's letting your game down? Is that where you're losing your shots? Yeah. I'm like, well, I don't really know. He's like, okay, so you start with that. We've got to figure out which bit of the game needs fixing before we start work. Otherwise, you'd be wasting your time for the whole year. Yeah. And it's the same idea with your business. It's like, okay, well, let's figure out which bit doesn't work. Yeah. Which bit's letting us down before we try and fix something? Otherwise, you just spend all year trying to fix things that, that don't have any impact. Yeah. And ultimately, with most businesses that I work with anyways, it's the front end that doesn't work. The lead generation, the traffic source, the traffic game. They're not spending yeah. enough or paying enough attention to that. Um, you know, they might they might get 50 people to inquire about something and then they didn't buy. Then think it's the offer that's not right. But technically, it could just be you need to get more people. <laughs> you, need, you, need, you need to test your offer with a thousand people and then yeah. make an informed decision, true informed decision, or whether or not it's yeah. working or not. Yeah, because it, it, it's like you said, you know, when you gave your example at the beginning of if you know if you if you if you only if you only get fifty people through, um, and then a you've only got an audience of fifty people to test whatever it is you're trying, but they might not be, you know, you might only sell one in a hundred. Well, if you've only got 50 people to test it with, you're not going to make a sale. And then you could exactly. spend forever trying to say, well, how do I make it better? How do I reduce the price? Do I do X, Y, and Z? But you'll still never make a sale in those 50. Yeah. Yeah. True. Very, very true indeed. Yes. And it's the same, well, you know, from, from my perspective, you know, when I'm working with, with clients from a mindset positioning or looking at beliefs and conditions, I'm the same. I'm like, you could spend all year developing strategies and coping techniques to overcome some of the issues that you're struggling with. But if you don't understand which bit's causing the problem, then you, we're never going to solve it. It just means yeah. that you, you'll end up needing coping strategies for the rest of your life. Exactly. Um, and, and you'll be the same. You know, if you don't fix the lead generation part of your business, you'll be forever reliant on referrals or looking at ways to network or looking at ways to drive when ultimately you could be missing out on, okay, I've got 40 people coming to me every month yeah. Um, asking for a call or buying something of mine, or um, that I can that I can actually market to on an ongoing basis. Exactly, and all the, just about knowing your numbers, knowing your, your, your KPIs, I guess in a business terminology. So you know yeah. how much you can spend per lead, because you know if you spend that per lead, it's going to mean this in profit on the back end. If your conversion rates throughout the funnel are correct or on point. And then it's just like, how can I get an extra 1%? How can I refine that and get better? And that's when the testing comes into it, in the play. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. The company's doing. Yeah, it's been, I've enjoyed that, Dean. Thanks for inviting me into the group. I hope everyone else that's, that it's watches been, it's it. Been, it's been Enjoyed phenomenal. It. Um, and you said you had a, a, a bonus for some people um, in the group if they, yeah. uh, if they do watch. Yes, yes. So... Um, the most value I can provide to anyone that's watching this right now is a call, ultimately. So I'm giving you guys, um, if you want to jump on a call with me, to you know, shoot me an email at mark at systems and scale and just let me know that you've watched this video and you're part of Dean's group. Uh, we can all arrange to jump on a call together and I'm happy to do a free consultation session for anyone that did get to the end of the video and has watched it and wants to kind of maybe inquire or talk more about your, your business strategy and you know, maybe see, see if we can find whatever roadblocks or potentially hold a new back and come up with this, the systems and strategies that you can implement to you know, remove those roadblocks and start taking your business to where you want it to be. So is that the right email address, Mark? Mark, Mark at systemsandscale.com. Yep. Uh, no, dot digital. Sorry. <laughs> dot digital. Yeah, sorry. Perfect. Let me just edit that. And then oh, that's probably my bad. <laughs> get on the screen for people. Uh, yeah. Perfect. That one, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's the one. Yeah. Okay. Good. Great. So um yeah, if you if you're watching this and you uh feel like you'd benefit from uh, a bit of an audit and a review from Mark, then drop him an email at mark at systems and scale.digital. Let him know you watched 
uh, the video in um, the uh, Crack the Code community, um, and you're one of my one of my members, and um, Mark will be able to schedule a call for you. I, I can't recommend that enough. Um, like I said, you know, I've been Mark, working with Mark and his team now for about 18 months, and the difference in my business from 18 months ago, and I was like night and day. Um, you know, there's, uh, as Mark alluded to, there is no better feeling than waking up every morning with a with a list of, of people who've either downloaded a, a product or been added to your list or have joined your free Facebook group or, more importantly, have booked a call. And, and you can see them in your diary already scheduled um, uh, and have, have provided you with some information for you to be able to, to share some value with them. Um, yeah. So it's definitely worth having a conversation um, you know, Mark's Mark's been implementing that strategy not just for me, but for other people, and also some of my clients um, that I've been working with from a, from a mindset perspective on their business uh, have also um, used Mark's uh, systems in 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 their business too. So definitely worth um, uh, booking a call and finding out more about how Mark and his team can uh, can help you. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Dean. You're welcome. Thanks very much for your time, Mark. Uh, let no you get back to your 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 son. Uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll catch up again soon. Bye. Thanks, Thanks again for your time. See you, everyone. Bye bye. Awesome. Well, I hope you got real value from that. Um, uh, we're going to do more of these, either with just me live or with with special guests like that. So, um, super excited to bring you more and more value in the group, and uh, look forward to having some more. Some more people in in here sharing their um, ideas, concepts, and adding value to you and your business too. Take care, everyone. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll make sure Mark gets them and we'll get you an answer. Or make sure you can book a call at marketsystemsandscale.digital uh, and let them know where you saw um, the video uh, so that you can get your free call. Take care. Have a great weekend, and uh, I'll see you all soon.